but now we have actually like loaded into Open4D. We can do all the operations we want on it here in, in Open4D. Hey guys, welcome to a new video on this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, I'm going to show you how we can actually like create point clouds with our smartphone. So I'm just going to go outside, I'll take a video and then I'm, I'm going into the computer here again. I'll show you the steps on how we can actually like generate a point cloud uh, from a video file. So we'll go in, take the individual images or like frames in our video and then we're actually like going to match those in a program. And then that program can actually like generate a point cloud uh, for us that we can then load into uh, Open3D and do all the different kind of processing methods and operations on our point clouds. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, chat us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member and you need some help with your projects, I can also help you out if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all here, I'm just going to share the video file here that I generated. So we have a seven, a seven second video, a video here. So here we're just having our camera. We're just like rotating around here, taking like this kind of like panorama view. So we get all of these images here of the environment. Then we're going to create an actual like point clouds from this video file uh, that we just saw here. So we have around like seven seconds and we're running 30 FPS. So we have 30 frames per second in our video file. And then we're going to match all the different kind of images in our video here together, create point clouds from that information and then load it into Open3D. So when we actually have our video file, we need to convert them into individual frames. So we need to convert it into the TIFF or TIFF format. So you can either do that by downloading Resolve or just going in online and using an online converter. So you can just search for your like uh, your file type for your movie or like for your video. So it could be MOV or like MP4 or something like that. Then you can just search for that type and then convert to TIFF or TIFF format. But you can also do it here um, in, in, in Resolve if you actually have that video editing program. So just load in your video, uh, generate the, the correct solution and, and so on. And then you can go into deliver. And then you can go up here and actually just choose the format that you want to export um, your video to. So we can just go in here and the default will be probably an MP4 or a QuickTime. But then you can go down here and choose the TIFF option. And then when you actually like export uh, your video here you will just get all the individual images that we have in our video file so here i'm just showing you the, the output here or like when we have export a video file so we get all these images here which will just be all the frames in our video file down here at the bottom we can see we have 221 items or like 221 images here from our video file so it took around like seven seconds a bit more than seven seconds with 30 frames per second so now we're actually going into a program and then we're stitching all these images here together so we're able to generate a point cloud. To be able to do that, we need some different kind of features. So we actually like need the environment that we want to reconstruct or like we want to uh, create generate a point cloud on. We need to actually like have different kind of like edges, correspondence and features in our images that we can actually like match. If we're just going to like take a video off a wall, we don't really have any correspondence or like any features that we can match points from, from one, one image to the other image. So we can actually like correlate or like um, map between the images that we have in a video file. So we actually like need some textures and different kind of stuff that we want to create our point clouds on, which is also often the case uh, we have. Again, you can also just go into um, the Google search for MOV to TIFF converter, for example, go into an online converter and just drop your file and then just get all the images that we can then use in our program later on. So the program here that we're going to use is actually like this ATSoft here where we're going to into downloads and then we're going to use this Meta shape here from Agisoft. Uh, so this software here, you can get a free trial, a 30, 30 day free trial. So you can, you, you can use that, try it out and see if it's something that you need. You can also just, if you're doing some hobby projects or like some projects uh, for you, for yourself, you can just get the free trial, use it for generating your point clouds and then exporting your point clouds and then work with them in Open3D and, and, and so on. So this software here is actually just formatting all the images that we just generated and actually creating the point clouds and then we can export that point cloud into a file that we can then load into Open3D, do all of our, all our operations on that we've been through throughout this tutorial. So here you can just go in and download it and now I'll open up the program. So here we actually just have our program uh, and then we can go up here to the workflow. Then we need to actually like add the photos or like the images that we just got from our video file and that we exported either from an online converter or for, for from Resolve. 
So we're just going to add the photos. We're going in here, we're selecting all the images, and then we're just going to hit open. When we actually open it up here, it will just uh, import all the images. Then we can go into workflow again. Then we actually need to hit this align photos. So we actually like align all the photos together. So we have 221 images. Then we're just going to align all of those. So we're matching. So we're just taking different kind of features in the images, matching them to each other, finding correspondences. So we can actually like align them onto like one panorama image, as you can as you can say. And we'll also get some information about the depth in the image. So we're actually like get, uh, able to generate 3D points from uh, these images or like from a video file. And this video file here is just captured from our smartphone. So the only thing we have to do is actually like take our smartphone, take take a scene that you want to reconstruct with a 3D point cloud. Uh, you can just take a video, go into a, a program online converter, get all the images or all the frames that we have in our video, then go into meta shape here, align the photos, and then we can actually like just build a dense point cloud that we're going to hit down here after we've aligned our photos and then export the point cloud. And then we can just work with it in any other program that we want to uh, and that we're using uh, point clouds for. So we're just going to hit align photos here. We can we can choose some different kind of options. So we're going to have sequential and then we can also choose the accuracy here. So like depends on how accurate you want your uh, point cloud here. If you're just choosing low or medium, you will still get a fairly nice and accurate point cloud. And also if you have a lot of images, it will just take a really long time if you're choosing like the high or highest. It will probably take like too, too, too much time and it will not be worth it uh, for the accuracy. And also if you have more than 200 images, it will just take, it will just take longer. You should keep it like around 100 to 200 images. So your videos shouldn't, shouldn't be longer than five uh, to 10 seconds. So now we're just going to choose the medium accuracy and we're going to hit okay. So now we'll just go in, in here processing in progress. We can see like how long time there's left. We're detecting all the different kind of pairs in the images. We're selecting the pairs. And then after that it is actually just matching the points as we can see. We can also see that it's estimating the camera location. So it actually just does all the algorithms that we've been through in the computer vision tutorial, where we're talking about image stitching, how we can actually like stitch images together by matching points in the images. Then we're also going to estimate the camera location um, and so on. So we can actually like map it out or like reproject our points out from 2D points to 3D points because we need those 3D points uh, to actually like have our, our point cloud off our environment or like the, the environment or scene that we want to reconstruct uh, with, uh, with a point cloud. So now we're actually like uh, align the images here together and we get like this some kind of point cloud. So we get some points here. We can see like the background here with the different kind of colors on the buildings. We're also estimating all the camera positions here. So all the frames that are taken by the camera uh, is actually like estimated like the, the camera location as well. So we can see here that when I actually like um, um, captured this video, I was actually like rotating around in like this circle when we we're just doing these panorama images or like panorama video. But now we have this kind of point cloud, but we actually like want to create a point cloud where we can see all the details in our point cloud. So we actually just go up to the workflow here again. And then instead of aligning photos, we now have two different kind of options. So we can either build a dense point cloud or like a build a mesh. So if I just want to build a mesh, uh, we're actually going to put like texture on it and these triangles and so on as we've been through in throughout this uh, OM 3D tutorial, where we both have these mesh data data structures and the dense point clouds. But in this video here, we're just going to choose the dense point cloud. So now we just hit here, we get some, some different kind of options again here. We're just going up here with the quality. We can choose ultra high, high, medium, low, lowers. We're just going to go with medium again. If you're choosing high, it will just take longer time and it's not really necessary. We can also see here that we have some advanced settings. We can actually calculate uh, the point colors, which we also want to get like the point colors. We can also get the point confidence. So like how confident is it that this point is actually like in the point cloud and how accurate this point. And we can also get some depth filtering here. So if we want to actually like disable depth filtering and so on, if we don't want to get information about depth, but we actually want that, but we're just going to choose this mild uh, depth filtering in this example. When we hit OK now, it will actually like generate our point cloud from all these images here that it has aligned or like this stitched together from our TIFF format. So it will just take some time here. We can see that it has like four, around 40 seconds left. So now when we have generated our dense point cloud here, we need to go out to the model. Then we need to go down to view mode here because right now we're just uh, watching our, or like looking at our point cloud. But we need to choose this dense point cloud here because we actually generated that. 
Um, so we're just going to hit dense point cloud and now we will actually like get the point cloud here of our whole reconstructed environment We will still have all the camera locations here that are estimated But now we have all the details in the images We can see like all the windows the cars even the details in the cars like uh, the wheels uh, The doors here all the bicycles that is in the, in, in the image here or like in the point cloud as well We get all the same colors as we had in our images So this is actually like a really nice dense point cloud that we have generated by only taking our, our phone, going outside, finding an, an environment that we want to reconstruct with 3D points that we can then do, uh, do operations on in other programs uh, later on. And actually just taking the environment into the computer with these 3D point clouds and we actually get really nice results. We can even see the depth here is changing um, in the images here. We can rotate it around and see some different kind of stuff. But this is just like the program so we can actually like align the images and build our point cloud, point, point cloud really easily uh, without actually like implementing the algorithms ourselves and doing all these image stitching um, and building the point clouds and so on because we have actually like done it in previous videos where we're just taking stereo images combining two images together and then creating a point cloud from that but now we actually like use video where we use 212 images together and we want to stitch those and we don't really have an aligned camera or like we don't have a stereo vision set up where we're taking all these images from so the algorithms is a bit more complex when we actually like want to re-project our points out to the 3d world um, again so this is actually like a really nice program that we can use to actually like generate these point clouds from our image sequence so now we actually like just want to export a point cloud so we can load it into o3d so now we just go up here file again you can do all of these things here with the free version of metashape but if you want to export uh, if you want to export the actual like point cloud here so we can load it into open3d you will need this like trial version or you'll need to buy a license so we can go up to the file here and then we can just export and then we can just hit export points then we can just go in here choose a name for our file so we're just going to store it in this buildings dot uh, 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 pcd here so this is the point cloud file format we can also use the stand for pli format here that we can also load into open3d but this video here we're just going to go with the pcd so the point cloud data file type we're just going to hit save and then we're just going to replace it because i already had a point cloud with that name here we can just see we want to export the parameters or what parameters that we want to export so the sort data here would actually like be our dense point cloud our sparse point cloud will just be these points before we actually like went in and changed the view mode here of our model then we can also save the point colors we want to reconstruct the colors as well we can save some other different kind of things here if we had those uh, chosen under the options when we actually like generated the point cloud but now we're just going to hit ok and it will export our point cloud it took one second and now we have actually exported the point cloud so now we have generated a point cloud, we can go into Open3D, we're just going to take this tutorial example that we've been through in the previous videos here on the channel in this point cloud tutorial with Open3D. So now we're just going to load in the modules and then we're going to read in the building's PCD file that we just saved, uh, saved from Metashape. So down here, we're just going into the directory, I just placed this building PCD file in the test data here in Open3D. So now we're going to hit shift enter, or like yeah, shift enter, and then we're actually like, displaying our point cloud here that we that we actually just exported from the other point cloud so again we can play around with it again but now we have actually like loaded into open3d we can do all operations we want on it here in, in open3d that we couldn't do in metashape so metashape was only for generating point cloud and now we can actually like use our point cloud for some different kind of stuff we could maybe remove some outliers we can we can see we have a lot of outliers here in our scene we can do normal estimation uh voxel down sampling and so on so just a certain example, we can go down here and actually like do voxel downsampling. So here we have downsampled our point cloud, so we have less points in our actual like point cloud, but we still have a really nice representation. We still have a lot of details in our actual like scene reconstruction. We can also do normal estimation and so on, so we can apply all algorithms, all the methods that we've been through in this tutorial. But this is just a way to show you like how you can actually like create your own point clouds by only taking uh, your phone, using your smartphone to take a video, or if you have a video or some other different kind of things, how we can actually generate a point cloud and follow along in this tutorial. If you want to work with your own point clouds instead of these examples that are provided by Open3D. And also if you want to do your own projects and so on, and you want to generate your own point clouds, you just need images and you can play around with them here in this, in this program and, and do all the operations yourself. 
So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision, and now we're actually combining stereo vision with point cloud, how we can actually use stereo vision to get uh, information about the depth in our image, how we can generate point clouds from stereo vision as well if you don't want to use this other program here that you need a license for or you actually like your smartphone. So if you're interested in that tutorial about computer vision, I'll link to it up here or else I'll just see you next video guys. Bye for now.